to the Coaching to Flourish podcast. I am so excited to be joining you today with the fabulous Raj. Woohoo! I'm always excited when I get to hang with you, Raj. It's like the best time, some of the best time of my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm excited to hang with you, Ashley. Oh, thank you. Um, I know you have some questions for us. I was just telling Raj right before this, I'm usually the one who knows the questions and I don't know them this time. So I'm excited and kind of nervous <laughs> for what's to come. So I'm along with this ride with all of you here today too. It will be great. She's just going to lean in. So hi everyone. Some of you may already know me. I'm Raj Anderson. And sometimes I join Ashley on these Coaching to Flourish. And sometimes I join John. Uh, and we've had Brit. Brit joins us as well. So yeah. I'm excited. I've got some great questions today. And I think it was meant to be like this that Ashley was going to be on this. I think you're going to enjoy these questions, Ashley. So I'm going to start with this question, throw it at you and, and see what you think. So we had a question come in and it is, how can coaching help my perfectionism? Like as a coach. Ooh. Mm. Okay, we might go back a little bit back and forth on this question. So that's really great. Well, I mean, one thing, one of the really cool things about being a coach and stepping into this role is operating out of a growth mindset. You're going to learn pretty quickly that we don't have all the answers. We're not going to do this perfectly. And there's a lot of beauty to that, actually. I think initially, especially, I mean, for me anyway, I can speak for myself, it felt like I was failing in some in some way if I wasn't asking the right question or somebody wasn't walking away with this like profound or really tangible thing from a coaching session or something that I could tangibly see them walking away from. And um, really quickly learned that that's, I don't have that much power first and foremost, <laughs> you know, and just the beauty of um, learning and growing as a coach, like coming in and, and if, being curious about my own coaching style and how I am showing up in a coaching session and coming to a coaching session and saying, oh, okay, I don't have all the answers. So what, how can I show up here in the most curious and best way possible? And it, every coaching session is going to keep you on your toes a little bit because you don't know what the client's going to bring. And that's a fun and sweet thing. You're not going to be able to bring perfectionism to it. Um, and then also releasing that expectation of yourself because if you are trying to show up in perfectionism in your coaching sessions, you're not actually serving your client in the best way possible because you're trying to, I mean, perfectionism can, can come in a form of control. And so when we let go of perfectionism, we're actually able to show up for our client in a way that is just rolling with them and letting them be the, um, the one who leads the coaching session. We can follow a lot more appropriately and better when we let go of perfectionism and show up and just let a client lead and trust the process and trust them and then trust ourselves in that. And so, um, yeah, that's a really good question. What, Raj, what do you think? Well, you know, as a bit of a born again, perfectionist also, you know, I was thinking about what you're saying and, I, I really like the way you said that reminder to self is that it's not about me. You know, coaches have to, when you're going into coaching session, you need to kind of release any commitment, that any, any relationship that you have where you want to control that outcome. You know, you're saying, talking about control there and you need to kind of release that control or, or let go of it. And that's why I love coaching because actually it's so freeing, isn't it? I mean, it's really is, you're just holding space, you're listening, you know, you have a, um, a structure or maybe you want to call it a framework or a path that you move through. But really when you detach from that outcome, you release the burden, you know, and we're so often perhaps perfectionists or doers or helpers are kind of carrying that burden to try and fix it for someone. So I think, I mean, how it, it really helped me, one, detach from that outcome. I think the other thing as well is actually, and this is some of the work I do with leaders as well, it helps you to build cognitive agility. So what I mean by that is being able to think on your feet 
and being able to just be in that moment and be vulnerable too, because it's okay if the question doesn't land very well. And it's being able to be okay with that and managing the perfectionist and the inner critic at that point, isn't it? If the question doesn't land in that way, or perhaps it's something that the client is not resonating with in that moment. What do you think, Ashley? Have you had experience of that when it hasn't landed that, in the way that you thought it should or would? Oh, yeah. <laughs> when I first started. And I would get in my head when that would happen. And I'd be like, I don't know what to do with this because I don't have another question. Or I thought that was a really good question. How is this? How does this not make sense? And, um, you know, thankfully, we have that space within our training to be able to bring some of that to in a safe space to be able to do that. Um, and I remember the first time it happened outside of class with an actual client. And I remember John, because John had had a session, train, one of our trainings was just ask just ask whatever question, doesn't matter. Just be curious, whatever comes to mind, have fun with it. It can be fun, it can be whatever. And so I remember coming into one of my client sessions and asking this question and it did not land at all. She was like, I don't understand your question at all. And my first was like, ooh, like I kind of wanted to like, me. And then I, you know, remembered the training and kind of what you're sharing right now. And I was like, all right, cool. And I like, asked another question instead and it was in it and it hit and it landed but I could tell like in my training when I had asked a question initially that didn't land I got all in my head and it was so hard for me to let that go and then I would kind of as they're talking still be in the space of oh man what a silly question I asked or how did that not land I don't understand or was I really that far off while they're like talking, you know? And so by letting it go and releasing that perfectionism in a coaching session, I feel like I'm able to now with clients, if there's something that doesn't land, it's just oof, like, we're going to totally let it go. And I'm going to stay present with you and we're just going to keep going um, and not let my own pride or my own insecurity get in the way of what could be successful for this client. What about you? What is your experience with this? Oh yeah, this used to happen a lot. Um, I coach a lot of execs, I do executive coaching mm -hmm. and um, being questions. And in particular, who do you need to be? And I remember clients saying to me once, what do you mean in that tone? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> who do I need to be? I have no idea what that means. So it was a great lesson for me, actually, because it helped me to think of different ways of asking being questions for a start. Yeah. Um, because what I recognized was is that in that industry or in that area that I'm working in, that, you know, there is a lot of emphasis on action and getting things done and achievement and person wasn't used to exploring themselves in that way. Um, yeah, I remember being a bit startled, but I work with people all over the world. I've had somebody say to me, I had, don't know what you mean. Um, like, you know, there was a language difference as well. And, and I think cultural differences. And I think, as you say, Ashley, it's, it's having the ability to bounce back mm -hmm. from that, isn't it? And not letting it not making it about yourself. Actually, I'm also thinking I met with a new client a few weeks back and we were designing the alliance and there were some things that we were talking about in that. And the client was very direct with me and said, I would not like it if you use that language. Nope, that question does not resonate with me. Okay, what would be a better question that would resonate with you? I, I think it's being able to bounce back and be curious even in that moment. I was actually curious, why did the question not resonate? So I like the way you talked about pride. And I think it's it's thinking about humility as well, isn't it? I can be humble in that moment. It's okay. It's okay if it wasn't perfect. It's all right if it didn't land in that way. And also, as I say, it gave me some great strategies. So I'm like, okay, how can I ask being questions differently? You know, perhaps I'll think about energy when I'm asking being questions or motivation or what 
uh, skills or strengths would you lean into? Could be a being question. What kind of a leader do you want to be? Could be a being question. What version of yourself could be a being question? It's actually helped me a lot. I'm glad I was challenged. Yeah, I love that. I'm looking at it as an opportunity to expand as opposed to shut down. And I think that that's something when we when we look at perfectionism in this way, we have this shift into a growth mindset. When we fail, we're not a failure. When we make a mistake, we're not a mistake. And I think that that can be really hard for those of us that lean towards perfectionism to believe that if we do something wrong, then we are wrong altogether. So having that shift of perspective of, okay, just because that question didn't land or fails, I don't really like that word, but for lack of a better word right now, doesn't mean I'm a failure. It just means that question didn't hit the spot with this client. So what are the other questions? What is the opportunity for growth in this and expansion as opposed to shutting myself down? Um, and so I love that. What are some questions that you, or what I was thinking too is as a coach, it would be really good to lean into why are you feeling this? Um, why, where is perfectionism coming from? Like, where are you feeling this desire to like be perfect? And so I was curious, Raj, if you were to ask yourself some questions as a coach looking into this, like what would you encourage a coach to ask themselves around perfectionism? It's a great question. Um... And I think that in itself, the one that you said, you know, what, what is the benefit of perfectionism to me? What is the fear around not being per perfect? Um, what is the discomfort around uncertainty? Mm. Or what is the discomfort in lack of control? Um, what other areas in life am I attempting to be too perfect, perhaps? All of these questions that I have journaled on at some point. <laughs> I know me too. I'm so, yep, it's been a lesson. <laughs> one and the only one comes up. <laughs> exactly, and and I love to live by. You know, that this is something that I love to live by. There's no failure. There's only feedback, mm. because that way there is only ever an opportunity to grow. And if we think about failure in the sense of how it's described out there, you know, I could say I've had failed businesses or things that didn't work out or, um, you know, had to close things down and didn't make a profit from them and have to start again from scratch. And I'm so glad that it happened because if it hadn't happened, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you right now. So even if things did go to pot in a session, and it's really uncomfortable and you're being challenged. As you're saying, Ashley, thinking about what was the opportunity there for growth and thinking again to, you know, session that I did have a few weeks ago, brand new client who doesn't know me very well, who doesn't have that kind of relationship. And we are, and I have a lot of clients who know me or people that know me and word of mouth, um, and I was talking to my own coach about it. And I said, there's a real learning from that for me in terms of my ego mm -hmm. and staying humble. You know, I quite like it. And people normally fawn over me and are excited. And this was a lesson of humility that actually this person is going to challenge me. And I, I don't want to become stagnant. So, you know, that challenge and different kinds of questions and, and coaching different kinds of people, actually releasing perfectionism means I continue to grow. And that's what growth mindset's all about. That's so good. So this leads us very nicely into next question, Ashley. So I've probably mentioned this before, but I do work with corporations and I run women in leadership programs. So this is a question that I've come up with today because I was thinking about what we talk about in our cohorts is who you are is how you lead. Mm -hmm. Now this morning I actually I had a group mentor class and perfectionism came up in that in how a coach was coaching and exploring that but one of the things I shared is why don't we think about who you are is how you coach mm -hmm. and I thought isn't that interesting if we think about and it connects with perfectionism 
you know, how do we show up in that space as coaches? What are your thoughts on that idea on who you are is how you coach? Yeah. That's really interesting. Um, and I think actually really powerful. So, I mean, well, you know, there's a saying of like, we, we uh, what is it? We practice what we preach, um, or we should be practicing what we preach. And um, I think that that's a, a major, so it's, Ooh, there's so many layers to this. I'm trying to figure out what layer to hit, but I was just thinking about, I was just recently listening to somebody talking about busyness and rest and, you know, um, how often we just go, go, go. And where are we taking time to build a relationship or to, um, John Mark Comer mentioned something about like building this architecture of our life. Like who are we building for? And what, how, how are we building our daily habits to be able to build this life architecture and to become who we want to be or who we believe we are to be and all these things. And so I think it's really important for us to have this life architecture for ourselves, these daily habits and these things that we're leaning into for us to be able to pour into others. We can't pour out what we don't pour it, get poured in. And so with this busyness thing, I was even thinking like, if I'm in a, if I'm in a go mode and I'm not taking any time for rest for myself, I'm just go, 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 go. I'm not praying in the morning. I'm not reading. I'm not doing these things that I know that energize and give me life. Um, then when I come to a coaching session, I'm going to be a lot more frazzled and I'm going to be my mind and, and my energy is probably going to be fast paced like that too. And not that I can't have a busy day, but if I'm not centering myself, for me with God or in prayer or these things first and foremost to set off my day, then when I get busy, I'm not, I don't have a centering place to come back to as quickly or as readily as I might if I'm taking time for rest incorporated into the busy. And so it makes me think of like, that's a, a small little example, but I, that immediately came to mind where I'm like, oh man, if I'm not practicing rest, I'm going to show up in a coaching session, not restful and more quick. Um, when I'm restful, I'm slower to, I'm going to listen more carefully. I'm going to be probably slower to ask a question because I'm not feeling rushed. Like we have to get this done or find an answer or that kind of thing. Um, I keep snapping my fingers so much. I'm liking that. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't ever snap my fingers. Um, but yeah, what are, what are some of your thoughts? And we can come back. Uh, that's a, that's a really, really profound thing. I think it's really powerful what you just shared and um, that's around intentionality, isn't it? You know, how are we also intentional with ourselves? Because that energy shows up in other interactions that we have, whether it's when you're a coach or whether when you're with family or loved ones or a leader, all of those spaces, you're going to show up in that way, aren't you? And so thinking about our own self-awareness, emotional intelligence, our own daily practices. And then I'm also thinking about our own values and the things that motivate us. And we think about core motivation, not just the perfectionist, it might be the defender, the helper. I hear the helper a lot show up in coaching sessions when I'm assessing. And what I'm always curious about when I get to know a coach at the beginning of the assessment, I always like to ask you, what is your core motivation and how does that show up for you when you're coaching? And sometimes people haven't thought about it. And then it's like, oh, actually, I'm a helper everywhere. And I was trying to help too much in the session or um Actually, my values were showing up in how I thought the question should be answered. Or we have an expectation of how we think the question that we asked should be answered, but that person's not us. And then some of the other things I, th I think for us to really think about is what's showing up for you in a coaching session? So not like how did you do in that coaching session, but was there anything that triggered you or... I think we have to, Zig Ziglar talks about the checkup from the neck up. And I think we've got to check ourselves in case 
we feel any biases or any judgments because that's our map of the world that's our lens of the world and even though it's not about us we are bringing ourselves into a session or any interaction with people I would say, I feel like I need a t-shirt that just says like, yeah, that's really good when I'm talking to you. I'm just like, <laughs> no, I love that. That's really, that is so important um, to, to check ourselves with that um, because we don't want to lead. We don't want to, you know, we really want to empower the person in front of us to tap into what is within them and find those answers. And um, people are incredible. And a lot of times there's a lot going on in our minds and our hearts that we just haven't verbalized. And so being in a space to be able to pull that out is pretty remarkable. And I think a lot of times what we believe could be an answer is not actually an answer that is needed for somebody right now. I know I've been shocked multiple times in coaching sessions where I'm like, I did not expect us going there. And that was awesome. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That real awareness, isn't it? Or you know, sometimes I might hear, well, they didn't answer the question. Okay. Well, they didn't answer the question. They didn't answer the question in terms of what your view or perspective was of how that should be answered. Um, you know, people process in different ways. I think when I think about coaches as well, um, and I love to ask the question at the beginning of group mentor classes, you know, start to think about what is my brand as a coach? What is my style as a coach? And I think all of those elements, you can bring that in to who you are and how you coach. And I love listening to people who are very different to me as well. Creatives, people who are really creative and ask super cool creative questions because I can be more on the side of structure not that I can't do the structured improv or I enjoy it, but I do like to add that framework and be very clear when I'm talking about it. So these enjoyable listening to different ways as well. What, what kind of style do you think you bring in Ashley? Wait, answer that first, Raj. Give me a second to think. What, what, how would you answer that? What's your style? Um, my style, and I talk about it when I design the alliance with a, a new client as well. I'll say, um, you know, kind of, I'm going to hold you accountable. It's part of what the coaching is about. You know, I will have talked at that point. You know, this is what a coaching session is going to look like. And, you know, what coaching is and what coaching isn't. And we'll have talked about why now for them and i love to learn about my clients in that design the alliance piece because it helps me to meet them where they're at and they can also ask me questions and i'll say you know sometimes we'll have one session like let's see if we're a good fit you know my style in how i'm coaching is i love to bring in humor you know we're going to have a laugh and, and a joke around things as well often people cry people cry a lot that's okay it's a safe space you know there is, there is a judgment-free space that i'm holding here um, and I do share around accountability and direct communication. I talk about, you know, imagine me walking alongside you and shine a torch on the things that might trip you up. Yet I might see things that are going to trip you up that you don't. So I'm going to call you out. That's who I am as a coach. How would you like me to call you out? So we create a partnership and that relationship, yet they also know that you know, they are coming to me for that kind of brand of coaching. Or I'll joke with people and say, of course, this is a service you're paying for. Unless you want to pay me, just, you know, tell you things are all great. And people are like, no, they joke and we, and we laugh about it. And then we create that partnership. Is that helping to answer your question, actually? Do you believe you answered the question? <laughs> <laughs> How do you <laughs> hmm. Did I answer the question? Yeah, if, I think I did. Yeah, I think you did too. <laughs> you did a great job. Um, no, that's wonderful. It's very similar in a design the alliance call and covering all of those those similar things. And I would say that my style is very much 
um, playful as well. Like we're going to have some fun and coaching session, but very similarly as well, it can get um, emotional and I'm very comfortable with tears and going to the deep places, the places that feel uncomfortable. Um, and so that is something that I'll talk about is just pointed questions or going to those places where does a client feel comfortable leaning into that. Um, and it also a spiritual side where how would they like that piece to be brought in and mm -hmm. um, in in my specific coaching coaching with women on self-worth and like autoimmune wellness or we'll talk about if it if i'm working with a client who has an autoimmune diagnosis there's very specific things we'll cover in that because my style is not to um create like a nutrition plan for them or things like that it's to partner with them on their journey to autoimmune wellness and the rediscovery um, that is taking place for them in that journey of themselves and to empower them in that. And so we talk about those kinds of things, which would be, um, you know, very direct or very um, transparent about that's not somewhere that I have expertise or work on. Um, so here's where it's some good resources or, you know, those kinds of things too. I love that. And yeah, so she tuned in when she said, did you answer that question? Because I was still thinking there was a piece that I didn't answer. So great catch, Coach Ashley. Yeah, I was thinking about which piece didn't I answer around that question. And I think the important piece that I had not answered was around, for me, part of style and bringing in who I am is values as well. So I will maybe explore values or share values and diversity inclusion in particular, or fairness and justice. You know, I wear my Wonder Woman bracelet. So <laughs> fairness and justice is really important. Yeah. So we, we look at that as well. And I like to bring in diversity and inclusion elements. And for me, the piece of that is meeting people where they're at. And to meet people where they're at is understanding them, you know, what do you like to be referred to or what are important things about diversity characteristics would be helpful for me to know and sometimes people will share about faith or they'll share about spirituality or maybe it's a term that they're not comfortable with whatever it is it helps me to step into somebody's world and meet them where they're at and adapt so even though who i am is how i coach i also change it up in terms of meeting people in different places you know, even when I, I'm doing this coaching to flourish with John, it's probably different when I'm doing it to you because doing it with you because we are meeting each other in different places, aren't we? Mm -hmm. And knowing that John's an optimist and knowing that you and I have, you know, perfectionist <laughs> traits, you're going to relate to people in different ways mm -hmm. in that experience. And it also helps me, you know, I can take a session spiritual and towards mindfulness or I can take it very corporate, depending in terms of where that person's at. Yeah. We're almost out of time. We are out of time. So I don't know how that's happened. <laughs> well, I think that's so, uh, thank you for sharing that Raj. And I think, you know, a takeaway from that for those that are listening is, is take time to know your style, to figure out what is important to you as a coach and to, and to really consider what your design the alliance looks like with a client. Do not skip designing the alliance with a client. It is crucial um, foundation for the rest of your relationship with them. And to what you're speaking to, it's so important for us to walk alongside, to meet them where they are at. Um, that is true, true life coaching. We're not coming in... Um, as the expert role. So being curious and getting to know our client before we even begin a coaching session is going to transform the entire process and relationship. And so lean in, ask those questions, figure out, we have the design the Alliance handout for you all, but there's other questions that you can add. You can make it your own kind of what Raj was speaking about right now. Um, take some time to figure out what else you want to add to that, what you want to know about your clients and what would allow you to show up um, without perfectionism and growth in more of a growth mindset and curiosity and all that kind of stuff. So Raj, this has been so good. Thank you, Ashley. I really enjoyed it. And it just reminded to everyone, keep sending us your questions and let us know how we can support. Yes. Thank you all so much for being here. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Last week of July, wild. I Enjoy know, it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I will see you all soon.
Bye. Take care. Bye.